In this video, we're going to discuss ionization energies. Now, ionization energies are basically the energies that are required to remove an electron from an atom or an ion, and specifically in the gas phase. So the reason why we restrict it to the gas phase for atoms is because getting it in a gas phase is the only way to get a single, the ionization energy of a single undisturbed atom, right? If it's in like, you know, aqueous solution, then there's water around. Um, if there's solids or liquids, then you're really looking at an aggregation of different atoms and not really the ionization energy of the atom itself. So, um, so we really look at the gas phase when we're talking about ionization energies of atoms. So those that are listed in any type of table for ionization energies for atoms are those recorded in the gas phase. But basically you're looking at the following reaction, right? You have some uh, gas phase species X, and basically you're looking at the energy required to liberate an electron from that species. So once you put in enough energy, right, you'll produce the cation plus a free electron. We talked about this a little bit with the Bohr model, right? If you put, if you shine light, or the right frequency of light on an atom, then you can excite the electron, right? So this is how much energy does it take to not only excite that electron, but to completely liberate it from the atom and and form the cation right how much energy does that take okay so to kind of look at ionization energy i want to look at a specific example uh specifically magnesium right if we look at magnesium and look at three successive ionizations what this means is you know ionizing the species and then continuously ionizing it further so if you look at what we have here in these successive ionizations you've got uh, the formation of, of, of the magnesium cation, then another ionization of the magnesium cation forms the magnesium two plus ion, and then ionizing that guy forms the magnesium three plus ion, and you can keep going on and on and on. But I really want to highlight these first three successive ionizations so that we can understand some of the properties of ionization energies. So the energies here, so I'm going to write down the ionization energy for each step. For the first ionization, the ionization energy is 735 kilojoules per mole. That's for the first ionization. For the second ionization, which I'll call I2, the ionization energy is 1,445 kilojoules per mole. And then for the third ionization, the ionization energy shoots up to 7,730 kilojoules per mole. So I want to address a few things. The first thing I want to address is, you know, kind of ask you, where do you think this electron is coming from? Right. Let's just kind of isolate the first ionization. Where do you think the that electron is coming from? Well, if we look at the electron configuration for magnesium, right, for magnesium, it's going to be uh, neon. 3s2. Right. So for magnesium, uh, this is the electron configuration. So where do you think that first electron is coming from? Well, it's coming from this 3s uh, orbital coming from the valence electrons. Right. That first electron that's stripped off is coming from the highest energy orbital in magnesium. Right. That's going to be the easiest electron to liberate since it's far away from the nuclei. Right. It's going to have the, the highest energy. Um, so it's going to be easiest to liberate here. So that ionization takes 735 kilojoules per mole, right? So those, so anytime you're looking at an ionization, that electron is coming from the valence shell, right? Coming from those highest energy orbitals. Now, the second thing I want to look at is if you look at this, the, the second ionization here, the ionization of, um, the magnesium cation is almost double the ionization energy for the first ionization. So the second one is about double the energy of the first, right? Why do we see that jump in the energy? Well, if we look at the electron configuration for magnesium plus, right, we got neon 3s1. And so this ionization energy is higher, right? It's coming from this 3s orbital, but now there's a charge imbalance, right? Now there's a positive charge in the nuclei. So what that does is it strengthens the Coulombic attraction 
between the electron and the nuclei since you have this charge imbalance. Um, the analogy that people like to use is to use money, right? If you um, if you lose a little bit of money, you're going to hold on to the money you have left a little bit tighter, right? If you have $1,000 and you spend $500, you are probably going to hold on to that $500 a little tighter than you did when you had $1,000. Same thing kind of happens with atoms. They, you know, as, as they start to lose electrons, they use that Coulombic attraction to hold on to the ones they have a little bit tighter. And so that accounts for this jump and ionization energy uh, for magnesium, the magnesium cation compared to neutral magnesium. Now, um, the last ionization, the energy just completely shoots up, right? Um, almost a little over six times the energy of the successive ionization is necessary to ionize magnesium 2 plus. If we look at magnesium 2 plus, its electron configuration is going to be the exact same as neon. So what does that mean? That means that if you're going to liberate an electron from magnesium two plus, now you're, you're digging into the core electrons. These are the electrons that are closest to the nuclei. So I have this figure here, right? I'm showing the two electrons in the three S everything else is in the core. Those core electrons are going to be closest to the nuclei. They're going to have the strongest Coulombic attraction to the nucleus. So they're going to be the hardest ones to liberate. They're going to require a bunch of energy in order to strip those electrons off, in order to ionize them. So, um, so that explains why that energy is so much larger than the second ionization energy because it, we're looking at core electrons that are really, really close to the nuclei and are really going to fight um, being liberated or ionized, right? Okay, so so that's ionization energy, right? The energy required to, to re, you know, remove an electron from an atom or ion. Um, now, what does this look like as a trend on a periodic table? Because the periodic table is arranged in this way, we actually have a trend that arises for ionization energy. It's going to increase as you move to the right of the periodic table and increase as you go up the periodic table. Now, let's explain why for each one, right? As you're going to the right of the periodic table, you're adding more electrons, yes, but you're also adding more protons, right? And those protons are going to make the nucleus larger and it's going to give it more of a positive charge. And so that's going to make that nuclei uh, more able to, to hold on to those electrons. So the ionization energy is going to increase as you move to the right of the periodic table because you're adding more protons, more positive charge, and the electrons that are added are added at the exact same um, subshell. Right. So, so like, for example, for the second row, uh, if we compare boron to fluorine, right, fluorine has four more protons, much more positive charge, but the electrons are all still added in that two P subshell. So you increase that Coulombic attraction between them. And um, this uh, ionization energy is going to decrease going down because you uh, because the ionization energy, the electrons become a lot further from the nucleus, right? Uh, so if you compare helium to uh, to Krypton, right, um, you end up you, you're comparing a one s orbital, uh, or you're comparing the first principal quantum level to the fourth, right? So uh, so that means those electrons are going to be a lot further away from the nuclei. Remember that that principal quantum number gives you the size of the orbital. So those uh, so if you compare a one s orbital to a five s orbital then that 5s electron is going to be much further away from the nucleus. It's going to be easier to ionize, right? So kind of understanding this property of ionization energy, we can rationalize the periodic trend that we see for ionization energies on a periodic table.